be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to another episode of Rabbit Trails with myself and my partner in crime, Max Marciano. Max, how are you, brother? I'm great. I'm happy to be back. How are you, Dennis? Yeah, I am too. Uh, For those of you that haven't seen us in a couple of weeks, we took a short uh, hiatus to kind of uh, revamp our brains and, you know, kind of get some things organized. You know, we have to live a life too. And, uh, but we're back episode 23 today, and we decided we're going to bring some meat to the table. So for you red meat lovers, (laughs) put on your thinking caps because um, we're going to take a deep dive today and we're going to talk about desaturation versus dilution. Okay, you want to write this down if you're taking notes. Desaturation versus dilution. Uh, For many of you who have been to our classes, you know, we talk a lot about sometimes using a clear, uh, if you have clear in your demi-permanent colors or if you have clear and your permanent shades, using clear to dilute deeper shades and bring them to a lighter level. And some people still have an issue of understanding, number one, why would you even teach such craziness as that? And and second of all, help me understand why that's a better option for me. So what we want to do today is just kind of talk a little bit about what it is and um, give you some definitions. And then we're going to talk about the way we see it when we are formulating hair color. Uh, You'll notice in today's segment, there's going to be lots of little pop-ups. You may want to rewind this, go back and review. Uh, We're going to try and put everything in place so that you walk away from this session today, at least understanding the why behind diluting a color versus uh, other things that we think that are happening. So with that being said, uh, Max, are you ready to start this ball rolling? Oh, heck yeah. Uh, and uh, so- honestly, I think, I think the place where we should start is actually talking about what is in hair color that creates that background and tone and the difference between, let's say, a level eight, a level nine, and a level 10 in a particular series of hair color so that our viewers really get that solid understanding. Sure, sure. So you hear us talk a lot about background tone and reflex, and uh, I call them the holy trinity of hair color, meaning that (coughs) in every blended hair color line, you will have background in every shade. And background is basically the foundation. It is what holds the color visually on tone from salon visit to salon visit. So background is kind of like the anchor, if you will. And it's present in every shade. Uh, Second, we talk about tone. And tone is the language that we use when we communicate with each other. When we say, I'm going to use a mahogany, I'm going to use a beige, I'm going to use a copper. And third is something called reflect, which may be in my finished result or may not. You know, if I'm trying to create a truly neutral color, I'm really not interested in having much reflect. I want that hair cut, hair to absorb as much light as possible. I don't want to really have a tremendous amount of reflection, light reflection. So those are present in all shades at all levels. So when we make hair color, um, at each level, when we create a shade of color, we don't start with a dark shade and just simply dilute it. In other words, we don't start with a level one, add clear to make a level two, add more clear to make a level three. At each level, it's a different set of dye. We call them dye intermediates because those are the dye dye intermediates are the chemicals that bind together to create a color molecule. So at level five, there's a set of dye intermediates they use to create that visual result of a level five or light brown head of hair. At a level eight, there's a different set of dye intermediates because at a level eight, I'm now going to try to create something along the lines of a light blonde. So I'm not going to be able to do that using the same set of dye intermediates I had for my light brown head of hair. 
And so I want you to understand at each level, it's not a dilution of the level below it. It's simply a different color, completely different color. Many of you have experienced this already. You've taken and you say you have a red family and you used your level seven red and you really liked it, but you wish it were just a little bit brighter. So you choose a level eight in the same family and you find out, whoops, that's a different color than I expected. And that's because in order to make a level seven, it requires a different set of dyes than it does to make a level eight. How was that, Max? Was that clear enough, do you think, for everyone? Yeah, yeah. And just to reiterate that, so what what you're saying is, like, let's just take an ash series, like a, a four ash, a six ash, and an eight ash. Each yes. one of those colors is a different set of dyes, but the end result when you're looking at them in the swatch book is, they visually still look like they belong in the same family, even, even though they weren't made from the same stuff. Exactly. Each one's got its and, own set of ingredients. Right. And that's why most swatch books are made of plastic, so that they have control over what that, that uniformity that they want to create. Because truly, <laughs> if you looked at a, a color family, let's say your natural series, it wouldn't be a straight line. It wouldn't right. be a strip. It would be, it would be like a little mm -hmm. snake, depending on what yeah, I had to add to make the color visually. So let me get this straight. So when I am mixing colors in my bowl and, you know, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit uh -huh. more of this and a cap full of that. Every time I introduce another sort of uh, color or, you know, one of my special ingredients into the bowl, right. I am basically adding different combinations of dyes and Absolutely. that's creating even more variables to my end result. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So you can imagine for people who like to formulate like they cook, <laughs> And they add in 30 grams of one formula. They add in 15 grams of another formula. They add just five grams of a little extra. Then they add a ribbon inch or a dollop or a dot or something like a splash, if you will. <clears throat> Every time that you add that, you are adding, you are adding in background and tone. And... Mm -hmm you know, maybe some reflect based upon the color that you added into the formula. But it's like we've always said is that every time you add another formula, another, another shade to your formula, you are pushing that hair color formula closer to the center of that color wheel. Which brings us now probably to explaining what desaturate and saturate are and what dilution yeah. is. So why don't you go ahead and take that and run with it, sir? And then we'll come back in and share our our proposals, our our our, our perceptions. Sure, I think the that dilution is actually a, a pretty easy concept to grab a hold of. So let's start there. Okay. You know the the actual definition of dilution is to make something weaker with the addition of something. Nine times out of 10, the way we work in the salon when we dilute a shade is, you know, typically by adding clear. And most of the time we're using it with like demi-permanent hair color, you know, right. where we're afraid, we're afraid something's going to be too strong or maybe uh, too tonally influenced. So we add some clear to it, you know, when we're toning or glazing. And, and that is, if you think about it, you know, if the level system you viewed up and down mm -hmm. and you're taking something here and adding clear to it, you are, you know, bringing it up here. You're weakening it and making it a lighter version of itself. So, right. you know, 
we like to say, like when you're looking, you know, at the color sphere, where value is an up and down, you know, uh, movement on the color yes. sphere, you know, one's, one's the South Pole and 10 is the North Pole on the yep. globe. The addition of clear moves the dilution up and down. So you're making a lighter version of itself. Even yeah. if you're doing, you know, you know, the drop created by this guy, or actually I got to go like that, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're, you're taking, you're taking a blue black, just a tiny bit of it, and you are diluting it with a ton of clear and making it a lighter version of itself. Right. So think of dilution in an up and down movement. Right. Hey, can I can I jump in here one second? Because you, please, there's some please. one key thing is that listen to what Max said. You are making it a lighter version of itself. That's a that's a real key phrase here, because we're diluting it with clear, which there's no there's nothing there's no dyes in clear normally. It's just the base of the color. So we're not adding another color to it. We're simply <clears throat> diluting it, the, that set of dyes that were originally created at, let's say, level four, we're diluting them with clear and we're moving them up the scale. So it's still the same set of dyes that were created for that level four, but they're setting now at a lighter level. So it's, I, I just wanted to make it clear that they understood, yeah. make it clear about clear. Sure, that sure. they understood what the, what we're talking about because that Get, truly is getting clear. Is. Getting clear on clear. Getting clear on the subject. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds like a hashtag. I, Get clear are, on clear. <laughs> when when you are using one shade with clear, you are just making a weaker version of that shade. Whether you're adding one gram of clear. Or 100 grams of clear you're right. just you're you are diluting now desaturating or saturating is a whole different movement on the color sphere so right. dennis let's let's start with the saturation what first saturation is yes yeah mm -hmm. i think that's like the easiest way okay great i'm gonna let you go ahead and do that brother all right so, so when you're looking at the color sphere and you're looking at the outermost rings of it, you're, you're seeing the hues, right? You're seeing the purest form of the color, pure red, right. pure blue, pure yellow. So saturation refer refers, refers to the purity of the hue. As you are pulling that hue closer to the center of the color wheel or color sphere, it is becoming less and less dominant because the action of pulling a hue into the center of the color sphere has to have the addition of something, which is typically the, what's in the center of the color wheel, which is right. gray or what we would just refer to we can refer to it as background in this case. So, yes. uh, so you are becoming more dominant with what's in the center of the color wheel and the hue or the purity of the color is becoming less dominant. So as you're getting closer to the center of the color wheel, that is, you're becoming more and more desaturated. Does that make sense, absolutely. Dennis? Yeah, absolutely, it did. Um, so we call that chroma. That's another word for it. Chroma is actually the word for it. The technical word for what is happening is saturation. So chroma is a measurement of purity. So the closer to the outside of the wheel, the more pure the color is. As it moves towards the center of the wheel, it is less pure because you're adding something to it. That's what desaturation is. We're adding something else to the formula to reduce the amount 
are the dominance of the hue. So you can imagine, and when we formulate, what we learn to formulate hair color is like, if I wanted to, if I had orange, I would use blue. So either add gray to the formula or adding blue to the formula, which would be what we call a complementary color, would also cause that hair, that color to visually move towards the center of the wheel, as would every time you add another color to your formula, that, that background tone is pushing it closer and closer to the center of the wheel until you don't have a hue, which really is literally the tone that we talk about in a color because the hue is, is the color. So we talk about a mahogany. If I desaturate a mahogany, I am not gonna, I'm not gonna have, maho I'm gonna lose my mahogany tone. Sure. So real life example, guys, think about it like this. Your client walks in, she's 100% white. She wants to be colored a red shade, but she doesn't want it to scream. But let's say you don't have any pre-mixed, you know, natural red brown. So what do we normally do? We take a red shade and we mix it either with a shade that has natural or gold or, you know, one of the gray coverage series, you're typically doing it at the same level. Well, what are you doing? You're taking this bright shade and this other shade and you are pulling it closer to the center of the color wheel so she doesn't look like Lucy, I'm home, you know, or <laughs> Bozo the Clown, however right. you want to say it. But you're actually, that's, that's a case where you really do want to desaturate a shade. So the hue is not so dominant that she looks like her head's on fire. Exactly, exactly. So now let's take desaturation and let's apply it to, let's go back to how colors are made and let's mm -hmm. apply desaturation to that. So, so when a color chemist makes a color, a shade of color, as the shades get lighter, the hair is contributing less warmth, which seems to always be a challenge for us. So because at lighter levels, the hair doesn't contribute as strong a warmth as it does at darker levels, it only makes sense that when I make my lighter shades that I'm not gonna have to use as strong a pigment. So my lighter shades in a hair color brand are gonna move closer to the center of the color wheel. So when I make color, I am also, as the shades get lighter, the, <clears throat> the tones that I put in the shades are gonna become much softer because I don't have to counteract that much warmth that the hair contributes. So like in a violet family, a level seven violet would be a much stronger set of dyes than a level nine violet because at level nine, we're only dealing with yellow, we're at level seven, we're dealing with orange. Does that make sense, Max? Something you need to add yeah. to that? Um, no, just in my own sort of thought process, I kind of had this, uh, my own little epiphany here too. You guys, grab a swatch book, any swatch book you want, and just kind of flip through the, the shade. The more brown or blonde, with less influence of tone, those are shades that are desaturated. Your stronger, brighter reds are more saturated. And that's kind of how you have to look at it. And, and, the, and the big thing that this just sort of always brings us back to, to you guys, is knowing what you're really working with. Dye out your colors because they will tell you how saturated or desaturated something is. Yes, absolutely. And that, that is the magic key. Um, you know, we can give you all the information that we can make available to you, but if you don't do die outs of your own brand, it will make no sense. Right. Because you're only, your expectations are only being formed in your mind. And you, you, you have to have something visually to see. But, but I just want to review quick so that everybody kind of understands what we're talking about. 
and I'm hard, sorry if I'm being repetitive, but it's because this <laughs> is sometimes it's a concept that seems easy when it's a concept you understand, but it may not be easy for someone else to understand when they hear it for the first time because it's contradictory to many of our belief systems. It's not contradictory to the way hair color is made. It is perfectly in line with the way hair color is made, but it's contradictory to the way we believe that hair color is made. So mm -hmm. desaturation simply means you're losing purity or you're losing strength or you're losing dominance of the tone. So the tone, if that's your goal, and in most cases it is, the closer I push the formula to the center of the wheel, <clears throat> the less tone I have, and therefore my result will end up not being what I want. So that's desaturation when I'm formulating and working on an actual head of hair. Desaturation and how it affects hair color that I work with, all hair color brands, is that the lighter the shade, the less dominance of tone there is. In other words, Lighter shades do not have, even if they're in the ash family, they're not strong blues. If they're in the violet right. family, they're not strong violets. Most of them you will see, most manufacturers say, it is gray with something, or it is, you know, and the reason is because there's background in those tones and in those shades, but the tone is not extremely dominant because the hair is not gonna contribute uh, too much to make the tone not show up most of the time. But now take all, both of those concepts and let's apply it to a scenario. I'm a, can we go go there? Do you, you think they're good with this? Yeah, next? yeah. Okay, yeah, let's, let's, so let's apply it to a scenario. So now I'm lightening my client's hair and I want to take her to a level nine. I want her to be a light blonde, a very light blonde. Okay. And so at level nine, my expectations when I lighten the hair is that the hair will contribute yellow, sort of like yellow, like scrambled eggs. But this client didn't do that. This client at that level nine had level nine lemon yellow. So I take my level nine violet, because that's what the color theory says, use violet to, to compensate for yellow, and I can't refine the yellow tones. Why? Because my level nine was built for level nine scrambled eggs, not for level nine lemon yellow. So what are my options? Well, you, you could try to make it darker, but that's not what your goal is. But is there something I can do? Yes. Here is where using clear with your color becomes a huge benefit. I can go to a level seven in the violet family. If I have a level seven or one of the darker shades, I'm just picking level seven arbitrarily. And by adding the right ratio of clear to my level seven, I can dilute that level seven up to a level nine. Why would I do that? Because the dyes, the set of dyes at level seven are more pure in tone than the set of dyes at level nine. Therefore, once I get my diluted formula up to that level nine, I will have more strength because remember, you're not covering anything you're marrying the colors together. That's what color is. It's like pixelation on a TV. We're adding right. pigment to what the hair contributes. Remember the law, it says that the, whatever the hair contributes will be 50% of your result. So knowing that, I wanna make sure I have strong enough pigments so that everything marries together and I create a more neutralized shade. How was that, Max? You're that was awesome. And I just thought of something catchy for everyone Please. to always remember. <laughs> you're combining, you're not covering. Exactly. So you're, you're taking what the hair gives you, what you put in the bowl or bottle, and you are combining those two. 
You're not right. you're not covering up underlying warmth. You are putting a combination with that underlying warmth to create a new visual end result. Right. Even the word and the I know phrase that, that, great. Even the phrase gray yeah. coverage is not accurate because <laughs> we're not covering right. gray hair. We're simply adding pigment to it. Man, we are so dropping I, a lot of bombs. Yeah, I hope you guys get the concept. Um, let me just give you another thing that you can do. Go to Google <laughs> and type in the word navy blue. Put that up on your screen on your computer. Then type in the word sky blue. Okay, so navy blue, sky blue. Those are both 100% fully saturated colors. Sky blue is saturated 100% at level nine. Navy blue is 100% saturated at darker levels, fours and fives. If you dilute navy blue, and you can do this on your PowerPoint, on your, on your computer screen, put the navy blue there and then make it 50% transparent. In fact, if you look up here above my head, you'll see sky blue. <laughs> And navy blue. <laughs> okay, so so first of all, look at them at 100% saturation. Now, put them each, go back to your, to your PowerPoint screen and dilute them to 50%. Guess what? Navy blue, even diluted by 50%, is not sky blue. They're two different sets of colors. And, and that's the whole point is to understand is that the reason that people do things like what we teach, like dilution, and we go that people say that's crazy, is because we know that we need stronger dyes. We can move the dyes up the chart just as well as we can anywhere on the chart. Now, for those of you that work with demi-permanent color brands that say to you, <clears throat> Don't use clear, use your nines and dilute your sixes with your nines to create something in between. You don't do that. Because if I'm mixing a nine, that's a fully saturated color at level nine. I'm not adding clear, clear has no color in it. So there's no saturation in clear. If I add a fully saturated nine to my fully saturated six, I will create a different color but it's based, it will be desaturated. It's not going to be a dilution. That's the difference between those two terminologies. And you understand, I mean, I'm okay. If you want to mix a nine and a six and you like that color, good for you. But the thing is, is that know what you're doing. You're not diluting anything. You are desaturating. This felt good today. Yeah, totally. <laughs> So, well, my friend, I think, I think this is a good point to let everyone digest. I feel good. I feel like the butcher. I feel like I we delivered a lot of meat for you today. You got lots to think Definitely. about. I'm sure you're going to have lots of questions. Um, please, you can you can write questions down below here on YouTube. Uh, be sure you ring that bell down below and subscribe to what we're doing here. We'd love for you to to, to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. You can also <laughs> follow us on Instagram. You can follow Max. He is at he is Max M Hair, and you can find me at Real Captain Color. Um, we are starting to do like a little weekly broadcast with uh, our friends group with Yvette Fontenay and Christina Christina out of Montreal, Canada, and we're having a great time doing that during the week. Um, be sure to check out our website. Uh, you can go to our website, which is www.gurunation.net, or if you're on Instagram and you're in my bio page, just click on the link. It's right there in my bio page. Take you directly to the educational catalog in our website. And we invite you to, uh, you know, take a look at the education that we offer. Uh, we have lots of classes uh, coming up and scheduled here for taking us into the fall of the year. And uh, Max and I are very, very excited about uh, things that are happening and things we're going to be involved in doing. 
And hopefully you found this beneficial today. I feel really satisfied today. I don't feel we went went down too many rabbit trails. I think we actually no, right. stayed on focus. Well, maybe we should make more take more hiatuses, right? <laughs> right. We just needed a, a hard reset. <clears throat> That's also, what we, we needed. Had our, we had our agenda, so absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, look, thank you all for very much for uh, watching, and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And oh, oh, there it is, Max. Oh. Our ride is here. So, uh, alrighty. I will see you later. To all of you, have a wonderful week. Hope you have some amazing hair color results. And uh, like we always say, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I'm out. Max, how about you, buddy? I'm out. Bye, everyone. All right, brother. See you in a class soon. You bet, everybody. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>